Hey, what's up, guys? Benny here, and welcome to the best settings for Call of Duty Warzone in Season 4. A lot of you have been asking for my updated best settings video for quite some time now, and I've honestly spent a lot of time fine-tuning everything to give me the best in-game advantage possible before I even hop into a match. So if you want to get better at Warzone and aren't 100% sure on how to set yourself up, make sure to follow this video completely for everything ranging from 19 secret settings you might not be using that you'll definitely want to know later in the video to best controller settings and even a couple of extra tips and tricks that I do to get myself a leg up on the competition. Also, 81.2% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to the channel. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more Season 4 content and you'll become a better player. I promise. Okay, first things first, let's start with your controller settings. These can be used by anyone, whether you're playing on console or PC with a controller. First of all, you'll want to set your BR button layout to tactical. Now, the reason for this is it's going to allow you to be able to slide, cancel, and drop shot far easier than the default button layout. It will take you some time to get used to, but is 100% worth it in the long run. Then you'll want to leave stick layout preset as default and invert vertical look as disabled. I'll be honest, players that play inverted scare me. The next important setting that was actually added more recently is your controller dead zone. Now, what this does is the lower your dead zone, the more reactive your thumbsticks will be. So if your controller has slight thumbstick drift, this could lead to unintentional movement, which could cost you by throwing off your aim in a gunfight. So what I've done is lower mine to 0.15. So they're more reactive than the default setting, but not too low that there's a chance for me to get that stick drift that I have no control over. Next, a big change I've made to my settings more recently for Warzone Season 4 is upping my sensitivity to a 6. Now, the reason I've done this is Warzone is so fast paced and you can get pushed from multiple angles at any given time. So you need to be able to react quickly, which higher sensitivities allow you to do. As a rule of thumb, low sensitivities allow you to be more accurate, but less reactive. So a six is a nice medium. And with you being able to change your ADS sensitivity multiplier for your low zoom weapons, you can still get that nice control when shooting targets at medium to long range distance. So for that reason, you'll want to change your ADS sensitivity multiplier to around 0.88, which will give you that extra control you need whilst aiming down sights to be as accurate as possible and pick up those kills. Then for your aim response curve type, you'll want to set it to standard, and then you'll want to turn your controller vibration off. It's just not a feature you need, and it can throw you off in an important gunfight when your controller vibrates in a way that you didn't expect it to. Next, you'll want to have aim assist as standard, and if you're on PC, you'll want scale aim assist with field of view as enabled, so you can take full advantage of the game's aim assist, whatever field of view you play at, which we'll get onto later in the video. Then I use these four settings as default, but the next setting that I cannot stress enough for you to use is to make sure that your use slash reload behavior is set to contextual tap. This is one of the most important settings that you can have in Warzone. It instantly makes you be able to do things so much faster from navigating around the map to looting. There is not a single reason that you shouldn't have this setting as contextual tap. The next controller setting you're going to want to make sure you change is that your slide behavior is set to tap. This will allow you to slide cancel, which will help you move around the map faster by resetting your tactical sprint, but also make you a harder target to hit at a distance. If you have this set to hold, you're almost just giving yourself a delay in being able to take the action that you want to in a game. So make sure that you have it set to tap. Then you also want to make sure you've got auto move forward, automatic sprint and vehicle camera recenter as disabled. But the most important setting here is parachute auto deploy. This needs to be disabled in order for you to be able to get to the ground in the fastest time possible. 
Remember, you can survive a fall of 13 meters. So you want to be pulling your chute at around 20 meters before cutting it again at 13 meters to get to the ground as soon as possible. So you can start looting straight away this is so important at the start of a match. But that is how you're going to want to set your controller settings in Warzone Season 4 to be the best player possible. Remember, you can change your sensitivity to whatever suits you best, but I definitely recommend using that 6-6. So next, I want you to head over to your general settings, where if you're on PC, you'll want to set your field of view. Personally, I use 100, as this still allows me to see what's going on around me quite clearly, but also doesn't make spotting targets at a distance too difficult. But the important setting here is to make sure that you go into the advanced settings and set your ADS field of view to independent. This means that when you aim down sights, you won't be punished by having what appears to be smaller targets to hit. And we'll zoom in a little bit, just like it would if you were using the default field of view. Then I have everything else as default until you get to the accessibility section. Personally, I have subtitles turned off, but you can turn these on as you do sometimes get useful callouts that pop up on screen that you would have otherwise missed. But something that I found especially useful is setting my colorblind type to protonopia and then setting the colorblind target to interface. Now, there's two reasons I've done this. Firstly, it turns the red dots on the minimap to a bright orange, making them far easier to spot at a quick glance. So you can tell where enemies are a lot quicker. And yes, I am colorblind, but honestly, I reckon this setting is best even if you don't suffer from colorblindness, as it's so easy to spot that bright orange. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Just make sure that you don't have this setting to world or both, unless you're colorblind, of course, as you just want it on your HUD. Then you'll want to make sure that you've got your mini map shape set to square as it gives you more minimap coverage to spot enemy players and then I have minimap rotation enabled just so I can tell where things are relative to me and because of that I've also with season four changed my compass cardinal direction text to just numbers because I can't tell what's north east south and west by just a glance of my minimap so numbers help make sure that there's no mistakes in callouts Make sure your team all use the same compass to avoid miscommunication. And those are all the settings you want to play around with in the general tab. Next, I want to talk audio. Now, audio is one of the hardest things in Warzone because at times it's so damn difficult to hear footsteps as it seems like they don't get that much priority on the sound mix, which I think is a real shame and can make it difficult to hear where enemies are coming from at certain times of a game. So for that reason, I use Boost High to try and make those footstep sounds as prominent as possible while reducing explosions and planes overhead. I have my master volume set to 69 as Warzone is just a loud game. Then I have music completely off because it's just not going to help improve my gameplay. Then dialogue is set to 75 and effects volume is at 100%. Then I also choose to have the Modern Warfare hit marker sound and that's all you need to know for your audio settings. Though do have a play around with the overall master volume to suit your own audio setup. I also make sure that I use a pair of headphones when playing Warzone so it's far easier to tell the exact direction that sounds are coming from. Next, we have graphic settings. A lot of these are for PC players, but there are also some important ones for console players and are important to get the best performance out of Warzone as possible. First things first, always make sure that you're playing in full screen mode. Otherwise, you're going to get input lag and it's just going to make you not be able to be as reactive as you can be. Then you also want to make sure that you're playing on the highest refresh rate that your monitor and computer will allow you to. This is quite possibly the biggest advantage that PC players have over console, because if you're getting 240 frames per second, compared to 60 that you get on console, you're going to see things before a console player, giving you those extra fractions of a second that you need to come out on top in a gunfight. I also play in 1080p because I'm purely going for performance compared to 1440p and 4K resolutions, even though the game will look nicer at those resolutions. Then you want to have aspect ratio set to automatic, V-Sync needs to be disabled. Then I've also set my custom frame rate limit to 240 for gameplay and menus to 48 and then out of focus to 30. 
this is what works best for my particular setup. But if your game is running at 144 frames consistently, set your frame rate limit to that. Next, you'll want to go to details and textures. Now, I try not to turn everything too high purely because when there's less detail in the game, it's actually far easier to spot enemy players and you're also going to get more frames. So I have texture resolution set to normal, then texture filter and geotropic to low, along with particle quality as low. I then have bullet impacts and sprays enabled and tessellation disabled. Next, you'll want shadow map resolution as low and also make sure that you cache spot shadows and sun shadows so that your computer doesn't have to do any extra loading in a game. Then have particle lighting as low, DirectX ambient and screen space reflection all disabled. Then as I'm recording YouTube videos, I have anti-aliasing set to filmic SMAA T2X. Now this could be turned off if you're going for pure gameplay performance, as all it does is make your game look a little bit nicer and smoother. Now we've got some important settings that everyone, whether you're on console or PC, you'll want to make sure that you've got depth of field disabled, then filmic strength also set to zero. Then you'll want world motion blur and weapon motion blur disabled. There's never a point in Warzone where having a blur is a good thing. So this being switched off is going to help you out a lot. Then finally, you want to make sure you've also got film grain set to zero. You want to be able to see everything going on as clearly as possible to help make you do the best that you possibly can. Now, those are all the base in-game settings that you can change, but I've also got a few secret little tips and tricks that I do to help give me an in-game advantage. Firstly, I use an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. You can also get these benefits if you use a scuff, but I program one of my back paddles to be pinged so that even mid-gunfight, I'm able to live ping an opponent so that my teammates can see exactly who I'm shooting at without any misunderstanding. You can also do this if you use the bumper ping button layout, but being able to live ping is so, so helpful. Next, if you're on PC and using an NVIDIA graphics card, you can take advantage of a new update, which almost feels like cheating a little bit, and it's called Game Filters. Now, what this does is put a filter over your gameplay, doing things like making it brighter or smoother so it's easier to spot enemy players. Now, I personally add a brightness and contrast filter, setting exposure to 0%, contrast to 30%, highlights to minus 100%, shadows to minus 80%, and then I turn the gamma up by 30%. 30%. This really makes dark places where you could easily have missed an enemy player hiding in a corner really stand out. I then also add a sharpen filter which I set to 60% and then I also ignore film grain by 100% to make sure there's no grain over my footage if the in-game option left a little bit behind. You'll be surprised at how much this actually helps. But there we have it, the best settings that you can have for Call of Duty Warzone in Season 4. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and click one of the videos on screen for more Modern Warfare Season 4 content. And I'll see you there.